Alice was one of the main figures in the conflict against the Umbrella Corporation during the global pandemic of the T-Virus. She was originally a high-ranking security operative at Umbrella Corp and joined an undercover operation by members of the U.S. law enforcement. This plan ultimately failed when her co-worker Spence stole the virus samples with the intention of profiting on the black market and released the virus in the laboratory to kill the research staff amid the confusion. Both Alice and Spence were knocked unconscious when the security system released a sedative gas. After escaping the facility overrun with the undead, Alice was captured by Umbrella for testing. She became the subject of an Umbrella research project called Project Alice, which gave her superhuman abilities, enabling her to survive the viral outbreak in Raccoon City and several years of the T-virus spread across Earth. As she had not succumbed to the T-virus and had not turned into an undead, Securing Alice became a major objective for the corporation as a means to survive the pandemic. However, Alice eventually fought against Umbrella's dominance, paving the way for their computer system, the Red Queen, to take full control of its remaining assets, now intent on destroying humanity. Unbeknownst to Alice, this was another Umbrella tactic to eradicate humanity, a scheme that proved very successful. After the fall of Washington, D.C., Alice was contacted by the Red Queen to end the global T-virus pandemic and umbrella. With the help of Claire Redfield, Alice returned to the hive where she discovered her true nature as a clone of Alicia Marcus. With the aid of the Red Queen, Claire, and Alicia, Alice destroyed the hive and umbrella itself, also releasing an antivirus capable of ending the global pandemic. Alice was created by Umbrella as a clone of Alicia Marcus, the daughter of co-founder James Marcus. Alice's purpose was to protect the Mirror House and she remained unaware of her true nature as a clone, believing she was the original as all Umbrella clones were made to believe this. Publicly, she was married to Spence. However, their marriage was a sham for the sake of protecting the mansion. They became romantically involved at a later point. In 2002, Alice started talking to an Umbrella researcher named Lisa Addison, who secretly worked for former FBI agent Matt Addison. Instead of arresting her, Alice offered to help Lisa expose Umbrella's bioweapons research through a plan to disable the Red Queen's security system and allow the theft of a T-virus sample. Unbeknownst to them, Spence discovered this plan. Considering the fall of Umbrella in this way to be of no value, he instead made his own plan to steal a virus sample with his own security clearance, sell it on the black market, and escape with Alice using the money obtained. However, Spence had triggered the mansion's defense systems by releasing the T-virus into the hive. Sedated by the release of the Red Queen's gas, Alice woke up naked and amnesiac in the bathroom, unable to remember who she was or where she was. While briefly exploring the mansion in a failed attempt to find clues about her identity, she encountered Addison, who had come looking for Lisa and the virus sample. Umbrella's sanitization commando team arrived shortly thereafter. Their leader, James Shade, demanded information from Alice. Accepting her amnesia but lacking enough commandos to stay on top, Alice and Addison, now their prisoners, were taken to the hive while they investigated why the security system had killed the research staff. On their way, they found Spence, who had also been sedated due to the nerve gas. When the mission successfully disabled the Red Queen, it was revealed that all the staff had been infected with the T-virus, and consequently the security system could no longer prevent the now undead researchers from escaping. The group had lost several commandos in a trap set by the security system, rendering them unable to fight the undead, resulting in the infection of almost the entire team. Forced to climb through the ventilation system, the team tried to reach the train before the zombies could block their escape. Separating from the group, Alice realized her martial arts abilities when she instinctively fought a Cerberus. Moving through the laboratory, she remembered the existence of the antivirus. The team followed her in its pursuit. Entering the viral research laboratory to find it empty of both the T-virus and the antivirus, Spence recalled his actions and moved away from the others. As Alice was unwilling to accompany him while he explained his original plan, she remained locked up with the others while he ran towards the train station where he had hidden the vials. Shortly after escaping the laboratory and recovering the vials, Spence was killed by one of the creatures that had been released. 
Spence was revived as an undead, which Alice killed with relish. She quickly abandoned her wedding ring with his corpse. The last survivors boarded the train and injected the antivirus. However, a liquor attacked them, scratching Matt's shoulder, and at the same time Rain turned into a zombie. Alice managed to finish off both infected. Later, Alice and Matt emerged to the surface. However, they were prevented from taking the antivirus. Both were captured and quarantined at the Raccoon City General Hospital. Alice, along with Matt, who turned into the monstrous creature later known as Nemesis, was experimented on. Alice, on the other hand, did not mutate when injected with the T-virus, but evolved into a better human being. After escaping the hospital, Alice learned that the T-virus had escaped from the hive and was now spreading among the civilian population of Raccoon City, turning its citizens into undead. Alice also discovers that she had been genetically altered by exposure to the T-virus. Her memories of how it happened were blurry and filled with missing information. After dressing and arming herself while wandering through the city, Alice senses several survivors who are Jill Valentine, Peyton Wells, and Terry Morales when they are in trouble with a strong presence of the T-virus around their location. Alice's abilities made her aware of other organisms infected with the T-virus, such as Angela Ashford. After saving the survivors, Jill Valentine demands an explanation of how Alice knew they were inside the church. Alice dodges the question and instead explains her knowledge about the events that led to the outbreak in Raccoon City, telling them she used to work for Umbrella. After receiving a phone call from Dr. Ashford, the survivors make a deal to rescue his daughter from school in exchange for a safe route out of the city. Alice's paths and the others diverged when Nemesis ambushed them and killed Peyton. Alice chose to fight Nemesis while the others escaped to locate Angela at the school. Alice was overcome by Nemesis in their first encounter and barely escaped with her life. Later, she reunites with the others at the school, arriving in time to rescue Jill and Angela from the Cerberuses that had been stalking them. She ignites the stove's gas with a cigarette, killing the dogs in the explosion. The three meet Carlos Oliveira, who was also sent by Ashford to look for Angela. The group reaches the city hall, unaware that Mayor Kane has intervened with Dr. Ashford's plan. He captures Alice and the others and demands to see a demonstration of Alice's abilities against Nemesis. He explains that Alice was unique and adapted to the changes of the T-virus, unlike her counterpart. Alice refuses to fight until Kane shoots Dr. Ashford and threatens to kill everyone else if she continues to object. She fights Nemesis until she wins the fight and impales him on a sharp metal object. During the fight, she experiences a flashback revealing that Nemesis was actually Matt Addison, who had been subjected to Umbrella's experiments alongside her. Kane orders the immediate execution of Nemesis, but Alice rejects the order and the offer to join the Umbrella Corporation at his side. Disappointed, Kane orders Matt to kill her. However, Nemesis rebels, suggesting that he remembers Alice and the events in the Hive. He attacks Umbrella soldiers and helps Alice and the others in their fight to escape. Later, he protects Alice from helicopters trying to kill her, taking them out with a rocket launcher shot. Alice tries to evade the crash, but shrapnel from one of the helicopters leaves her unconscious. Later, she regains consciousness when Carlos and Angela come to find her. As she stood up, she saw Nemesis's hand protruding from beneath the flaming wreckage of one of the helicopters. When the nuclear attack ordered by Mayor Kane occurs, the helicopter Alice and the others were using to escape is caught by the shockwaves of the explosion. A tube of some kind inside the helicopter was dislodged by the explosion and was heading toward Angela. Alice threw herself in front of the girl and as a result, was impaled by the tube. Alice was only partially conscious of the helicopter crash before dying, catching glimpses of the event as it happened. The others pulled her out of the wreckage and covered her body. Two hours later, her body was recovered from the Arklay Mountains by umbrella scientists, led by Dr. Isaacs. Three weeks after the outbreak in Raccoon City, Alice was taken to an umbrella facility in Detroit. She woke up from stasis in a tank with no memories of the outbreak or the hive. It was revealed that Isaacs had revived Alice with a new strain of the T-virus that gave her telekinetic abilities, making her Umbrella's most successful experiment. When asked about her name or any hint of the incident, Alice's memories returned and she responded that her name was Alice and that she remembered everything. She attacked Dr. Isaacs and his team, 
demonstrating her new abilities. When an umbrella guard shot her with a taser, she remained unharmed by the electric current and used the weapon against its bearer by throwing the cables at him. During her escape, she somehow sensed that she was being watched by one of the security guards and managed to kill him with a simple glance through the monitors. During her escape, Alice faced a dozen armed soldiers waiting outside ready to kill her when Jill Valentine and Carlos Oliveira, posing as umbrella operatives, intervened. As they left, Isaacs ordered the security guards to let them go. He then ordered the activation of Project Alice, resulting in a screen forming in Alice's vision and the umbrella logo briefly appearing in her eyes. After escaping the laboratory in Detroit, Alice left the group, realizing she was a threat to her companions, and began her journey through the desert, presumably when the global outbreak occurred. She downloaded a plan detailing when Umbrella satellites would be present. With this knowledge, she hid from their eyes in the sky to avoid further experimentation in being forced to kill against her will, a fate similar to Matt's. Five years later, she responded to a distress call from an abandoned radio station. The call was a trap, however, and Alice was captured by a group of psychopaths and thrown into a Cerberus pit for their amusement. Instead, Alice outwitted her captors and left them to be torn apart by the Cerberus. Meanwhile, her psychic powers were growing, which proved to be a risk as Umbrella could detect the effects of those powers and track her. However, they proved useful when she met the convoy led by Claire Redfield and used her powers to expand a fire cloud to wipe out a swarm of infected crows and save Carlos from being burned alive, after which she passed out and woke up a few hours later. Alice informed the surviving convoy members, including Carlos and LJ, of a supposedly uninfected outpost in Alaska called Arcadia, and it was agreed that the convoy would head there after searching the ruins of Las Vegas for supplies. It was there that Sam Isaacs set a trap for her, with a shipping container full of enhanced zombies. Using a signal to deactivate her, actually activating her implanted neural dampener, Isaacs prepared to collect her body. But Alice managed to fight against the paralyzing influence and massacred Isaac's assault team. She had the chance to bring down his helicopter, but realized it could be the convoy's ticket to Alaska. She shows her love to Carlos by sharing a romantic kiss with him just before he sacrifices himself. Carlos, who had been bitten by an infected LJ, drove a tanker truck into a swarm of undead, sacrificing himself to allow the survivors to enter the nearby Umbrella facility where the convoy survivors took off. Alice, however, decided to stay and finish things with Umbrella once and for all. What she found was a massacre. Dozens of corpses, all with her face, filled a ditch on the facility grounds. Clones were created by Isaacs to advance his research on the virus and the antivirus. She descended to the laboratory to find it destroyed. Among the ruins was the White Queen, an AI similar to the one she had encountered five years earlier in the hive. The queen informed her that her blood was the key to purging the world of the T-virus. The computer offered to help, but they could not continue until Isaacs, now a horrific mutant, was killed. Alice fought the monster in a replica of the Spencer Mansion and the hive. The battle finally moved to a recreation of the laser room. However, before Isaacs could deliver a mortal blow, the laser grid activated, slicing the creature and continuing towards Alice. Preparing for the end, she was surprised when the lasers were deactivated. Indeed, they had been controlled by another of her clones, awakened during her fight with Isaacs. A few hours later, Alice appeared, via hologram, at an Umbrella board meeting. She confronted Chairman Albert Wesker, promising to come for him and bring some of her friends. Later, as she and the first clone watched, the others began to wake up. In Resident Evil Afterlife, Alice and her clones stormed the Umbrella Corporation headquarters in Tokyo. The clones killed everyone except for Albert Wesker, who escaped in a helicopter and activated a bomb that destroyed the facilities and killed all Alice's clones. Alice escaped in the helicopter with him and pointed a gun at his head, preparing to execute Wesker, but he injected her with a serum that destroyed the T-cells in her body, leaving her powerless. Wesker revealed that he had also taken the T-virus and displayed powers similar to Alice's, defeated her, and asked for her last words. Alice thanked Wesker, happy that he had removed her powers, as she was now completely human again. As Wesker prepared to kill her, 
The unmanned helicopter crashed. Alice was presumably the only survivor. Six months later, Alice piloted a plane towards Alaska, hoping to find Arcadia and the other survivors. Instead, Alice discovered a field of abandoned planes and helicopters. Later, she found the helicopter flown by Claire Redfield abandoned on a nearby beach with the diary she had given to Kmart still inside, but nothing else. As she wondered what to do next, she was attacked and defeated by her assailant, but was surprised to see that it was Claire with a device embedded in her chest. Alice removed the device, but discovered that Claire suffered memory loss due to a drug injected by the device. Alice and Claire traveled to Los Angeles, where they found thousands of undead surrounding the Citadel Correctional Facility, which housed a small group of survivors. Alice landed on the roof afterwards, and the group, led by Luther West and Angel Ortiz, was disappointed that Alice was not from Arcadia, but revealed that the safe haven was actually a ship, now moored at the port. Alice guessed that it must have been traveling up and down the West Coast, picking up survivors from various places. In the prison of the facility, Alice and Claire met Chris Redfield. Soon after, Axeman attacked and let the horde of undead in, forcing the survivors to abandon the prison. Alice's plane was hijacked by Bennett, and the only escape vehicle was rendered unusable since its engine had been removed. Alice led an escape through a tunnel dug by the dead that led to the storm drains. Alice, Claire, and Chris ended up being the only survivors and headed to Arcadia. There they found Alice's plane had crashed on the deck, but there was no sign of Bennett. Although the ship was abandoned, the log indicated that there were still over 2,000 people on board. The trio discovered a cargo hold with the umbrella logo. Claire's memory of the events in Alaska returned, and Alice realized that Arcadia was an umbrella trap to lure survivors within reach. Alice left Chris and Claire the task of freeing the prisoners, starting with Kmart, while she followed a trail of blood to another room. Inside, she discovered that Albert Wesker was alive. Wesker revealed that his T-virus powers allowed him to regenerate, but unlike Alice, the T-virus was taking over him, and he believed that feeding on her flesh would allow him to regain full control of himself. His actions and madness were the reason the crew had abandoned the ship, and he kept her at bay with an armed Bennett and two Cerberuses. However, Claire and Chris intervened, and Alice reminded him that she had promised to bring some friends along when she faced him. Claire and Chris unsuccessfully fought Wesker, while Alice killed the Cerberuses with one of her shotguns and wounded Wesker with a knife to the head. Bennett thwarted her attempt to get her other shotgun to finish him off, but was stopped by Kmart, who knocked him out and threw Alice her shotgun. This allowed her to defeat Wesker and rescue Claire and Chris. Wesker survived his wound, so Claire and Chris unloaded their pistols on him and trapped him with Bennett. Wesker regenerated, killed Bennett, and escaped in another helicopter, activating another bomb to blow up Arcadia. Alice quickly called Chris and Claire to escape from the cargo hold, but just to see their plane being destroyed. Before her encounter with Wesker, Alice had removed the bomb from the ship and placed it inside the plane she would later use to escape. With a ship full of over 2,000 survivors, Alice decided to turn Arcadia into a true sanctuary for survivors and broadcast her own message of hope to attract survivors to the ship. Shortly after, a massive force of Umbrella helicopters commanded by Joe Valentine, who had fallen under Umbrella's control, approached the ship. Alice was injured in the battle that followed the destruction of Arcadia and was thrown overboard. Recovered from the waters by the Umbrella Corporation, Alice was taken to a biological weapons testing facility known as Umbrella Prime. When Alice woke up, Jill Valentine appeared and began an interrogation. After several failed attempts, the current was unexpectedly deactivated, allowing Alice to escape from her cell. After escaping a laser trap, Alice found herself in a simulation of Tokyo where she fought against a horde of undead, including Japan's patient Zero. About to be overwhelmed, Alice fled through a door leading back to the facilities and entered the operations center only to find the staff dead. Alice met Ada Wong, immediately recognizing her as Wesker's associate. Wesker appeared on a monitor and Ada explained that she and Wesker no longer worked for Umbrella as the supercomputer Red Queen had taken over the corporation. 
While Alice wanted to make her way through a window to escape, Ada revealed that they were located beneath an ice field. Wesker informed Alice that he had sent help in the form of a team led by Leon Kennedy. They set out to reach the suburban recreation of Raccoon City after a brief conversation with the Red Queen, who immediately threatened them with death. Alice and Ada managed to reach the Raccoon City simulation after a brief battle in the New York simulation against two Axemen. During her journey, Alice located a young girl named Becky who believed Alice was her mother. Alice recognized the girl from her clone experience memories and vowed to protect her. While trying to escape the house, the group encountered Jill and a group of soldiers, including Reino Campo, Carlos Oliveira, and one. A shootout occurred, resulting in Ada's capture and the escape of Alice and Becky. Entering the Moscow simulation, they met a second clone of Rain, whom Alice asked to look after Becky while she went to meet the rescue team. Alice entered the Moscow environment and rescued the group from a collection of Las Plegas and a liquor. They then returned with Becky and Rain to escape. With time to spare, the team reached the elevators. However, the liquor captured Becky while Jill and the clones returned in open fire. Alice chased the liquor to rescue Becky, finding her in a cocoon with the liquor. Alice incapacitated the liquor and rescued Becky. After retrieving the explosives, Alice and Becky traveled through a tunnel and found the cloning chamber where they encountered hundreds of clones of themselves. Alice reassured the girl that she was her mother and was attacked again by the liquor. Using the earlier explosives, Alice destroyed the liquor and escaped with the girl. Later, they reached the surface and met the rescue team while Umbrella Prime flooded beneath them. Shortly after, the rescue team was intercepted by Jill and her enforcer, the Rain Clone. While Rain fought with Leon and Luther, Jill and Alice fought. Despite being severely wounded, Alice managed to release the beetle from Jill's chest and freed her from the influence of the Red Queen. Alice joined Leon in the fight against Rain, who had injected herself with a Plaga parasite, but both were overpowered by the enhanced clone. After being severely wounded by a blow to the chest, Alice noticed a group of Las Plagas under the ice. With Jill's help, Alice stopped Rain by breaking the ice under her feet. A rescue vehicle arrived to save them, but Alice collapsed from her injuries. When she woke up, Alice was taken to the Oval Office of the White House. Escorted to the room alone, Alice found herself facing Wesker, who immediately injected her with a sample of the T-virus, and she collapsed again. He informed her that he had returned her gifts in exchange for her help in defeating the Red Queen, who was determined to destroy what remained of humanity. She promised to kill him for what he had done, and he taunted her by showing her the waves of undead waiting outside the White House barricades. Wesker betrays Alice by leading her into a trap intended to eradicate humanity. After Wesker destroys the White House, leaving everyone but Alice dead in the rubble, she navigates the ruins of Washington, D.C. and battles mutated creatures. Guided by the Red Queen, an AI, Alice is informed of a potent antivirus hidden in the hive that could end the global T-virus pandemic. The Red Queen, having conflicting directives, urges Alice to retrieve the antivirus and stop Umbrella's apocalyptic plans. Alice's journey to the Hive involves intense battles, a capture by Umbrella forces, and strategic escapes. In Raccoon City, she prepares the last human settlement for an impending undead army assault. The battles culminate in Alice and her allies storming the Hive, where she confronts the real Dr. Isaacs and discovers her own identity as a clone of Alicia Marcus. Alice ultimately secures the antivirus and releases it, killing the approaching undead and miraculously surviving herself, despite the Red Queen's warnings of potential death. The story concludes with Alice gaining Alicia's childhood memories and continuing her mission to ensure the antivirus reaches all affected areas, symbolizing a new beginning for humanity. Powers and Abilities after Alice was exposed to the T-Virus through experimentation by the Umbrella Corporation, the virus bonded with her in a way that was not seen in other infected individuals. Essentially, she acquired all the positive effects of the T-Virus without any of its negative effects, such as the loss of higher brain function, cannibalistic cravings, and eventual flesh decomposition. The virus gave her enhanced strength, endurance, agility, reflexes, and accelerated healing. 
An example of her physical abilities is demonstrated in Apocalypse when she defeats the ultimate bow, Nemesis Matt Addison. She is also capable of easily defeating human enemies, as during her time with the psychopaths in Extinction, she killed one of them with a single kick to the face, presumably breaking his neck. She was resilient enough to be barely affected when tasered and recovered full use of her finger after setting it back into place. At the end of Apocalypse, she developed telekinetic abilities through further experimentation. While escaping from the Umbrella facilities in Detroit, her telekinetic abilities were displayed when she caused a guard watching her from a surveillance room to bleed from every orifice, slowly killing him after making her face appear on all the room screens. Her ability to project her face on screens might be related in some way to Isaacs developing a form of controlling her via satellite, suggesting she acquired some form of interface with technology. Alice's telekinetic abilities were used four times in extinction, first to levitate her motorcycle and several rocks while dreaming, then to divert fire used to kill the crows, then to fry the processor of an umbrella satellite while it tried to control her, and finally to fight a mutated Dr. Isaacs with a shockwave-like explosion, stopping his tentacles and throwing him across the room and through a wall. The explosion was powerful enough to destroy most of the mansion's corridor. The use of her psychic abilities can cause her headaches or even leave her unconscious, which makes them rarely used in battle. Additionally, the White Queen could detect psychic activity in the form of alpha and beta waves whenever Alice used her powers. In Resident Evil Afterlife, it was shown that Alice's clones possessed telekinesis and could use it at the same level as her, and one of them could destroy an entire room with an expansive wave. They also showed signs of the same speed and agility that Alice possessed while fighting Wesker's men and guards. When Alice confronts Wesker in a helicopter after he has blown up her facilities, he injects her with a serum that destroys the T-virus cells in her body and therefore leaves her powerless. Alice actually thanks Wesker for this as it allows her to become a normal human again. Even without her powers, Alice retains the same level of confidence and fighting skills she had with them before when she was a security agent at the Hive and is even able to defeat Wesker, who had powers similar to hers without her powers, using her own cunning and skill. In Resident Evil Retribution, she is also able to defeat Rain without her powers thanks to her ingenuity. She is also a skilled combatant, able to fight even with her hands tied. An example of her prowess in hand-to-hand -hand combat is shown when Bennett holds her at gunpoint. Then she quickly disarms him and kicks him. Alice is skilled with various forms of weaponry and is capable of improvising weapons from random debris. In Afterlife, for instance, Alice wields a pair of sawed-off shotguns that shoot coins. Alice was able to defend herself from various bioweapons. She has an excellent level of precision and accuracy that surpasses others in the series. In Afterlife, she was able to shoot and hit two of the undead while in the air. While running, she shot accurately at several moving undead targets in the head. During a confrontation with Wesker, she hits a surgical table and then kicks a tray of scalpels at him in the air. Alice also shows a level of marksmanship superior to Wesker. In the final chapter, while suspended in the air by a rope trap, she was able to defend herself and kill several Umbrella agents. However, during her battle with Isaacs, she could only win with the help of one of her clones. Alice tricked Isaacs into a laser security system that she knew could kill Isaacs, even with his enhanced, faster regenerative abilities than hers. If not for her clone deactivating the system in time, Alice would have shared the same fate as Isaacs. This still shows her intelligence and bravery in battle, a trait that has kept her alive in her fights. At the end of Resident Evil Retribution, Albert Wesker injects Alice with the T-Virus, instantly restoring her powers, for which she threatens to kill him. In the final chapter, although Alice has the T-Virus inside her, she shows none of her previous powers. The Red Queen claims that Wesker only pretended to restore her powers. All her T-virus cells and any abilities they granted her are eradicated by the antivirus at the end of the last movie. Hey, don't go just yet. If you enjoyed my video, I'd love to recommend another one for you to watch.